got a few thoughts that I want to share with you. Um, uh, and I think they're kind of important. So I'd like it if we could just take a step back. Obviously, had a weird week this week, right? A little bit of a weird time. Uh, and it's difficult to talk about. But I do want to kind of clarify some things because I don't want you guys to worry about me. Most of all, I don't want you to worry. So on Tuesday... The reason why I had to cancel the ASMR and the reason why I wound up having a panic attack, it's sort of difficult to get into, but essentially I think that I got quite far ahead of myself during the production process. I was making so many assets, and there's a lot of that ASMR that you didn't see. There is a lot of stuff that didn't happen, and that early part is really only half of it, is really only less than half of it. And in my head, for that story to pan out, I thought that having something sexual transpire in the vents, I thought that was the right way of going about it. But the fact is, I don't think I set it up right. I wasn't thinking about the character as a whole, and I wasn't thinking about that story. Because ordinarily, what happens every time is that chat is desperate for something sexual to happen, but this time, they weren't. And I think that's because I hadn't set it up in the right way. You know, the vibe was going to be more serious and plot-oriented, and then people... And then I changed, shifted gears, and you guys, I don't think, were ready for that. And so essentially what happened was, I normally, when something sexual happens in ASMR, I kind of rely on chat to reciprocate a little bit. And I want to stress again, that is not your guys' fault for not doing it. I think that was mine, because I didn't make it sort of... Um, appropriate enough and I didn't make it feel real enough you know I needed to think about what was going on and it felt like a very sudden shift I was so far ahead of myself and so nervous about the technical aspects working that I forgot about the most important part which is making it an experience for the audience and so when I got in there and chat was sort of pushing back against it and saying no no let's do the mission let's get it was something I was completely not used to but also you know, a lot. I wanted to spend more time in the vent doing something a little sussy so that we could spend some time and then get towards the end of it, um, reaching that around two hour mark, which I like to do for ASMR. But if I had just kept moving through the vents and nothing had happened, we would move right ahead to another scene and I think it would have felt much too quick, you know, for something like that to happen. And so I was worried and I felt like all of this is going to fall apart. And then chat just wasn't really it's not your guys's fault but essentially suddenly it hit a point where when i saw all of that i felt so separate from the character because i realized yeah this doesn't make sense like the whole ordeal didn't make sense and i realized that i wasn't playing it in the right way and suddenly i just felt yanked straight out of character i just couldn't focus anymore I, normally, I feel like I really am that person, and I feel like I'm really in character, but I no longer was, and in that sense, because we were in such a compromising position, I really couldn't think straight. I was trying so hard to think of something to say, but literally nothing was working. Every time I tried a new angle sexually, maybe it's hate sex, maybe it's this, maybe it's that, maybe it's abuse by, you know, like some authority figure, maybe it's like a sort of close proximity and all of that kind of stuff, but none of it seemed to be working, not just for you guys, but also for me. I was struggling as well, and in the end, I, I just panicked. I couldn't think of anything to say. I couldn't think of anything to say, and that's why I sat in silence for such a long time, because, of course, during ASMR, you can't break character and you can't say i'm sorry guys i'm going to do something else i did that during the first take for the professor asmr but then we did it again and i wasn't panicking that was just network issues that was fine so it's difficult but i want to reassure you guys it's not that i am made anxious by sexual circumstances and content in asmr i've always been fine with that it never bothers me the part that got me was the fact that i got way too far ahead of myself this asmr was for the time i had to prepare it was far too complicated and relied so much on my performance not relying on chat. I needed to get so many different parts right that when one of them didn't go according to plan, I completely lost focus and I couldn't finish it. I will be making changes and I do want to try it again because I did put a lot of work into it and I want to be able to make it work with more time, obviously. So my plan for right now is that I think what I want to do is go again next week but with a few changes you know change up the pacing make the vibe different and see if we can make something else happen you know but that's all that's all that's all i have to say about that 
And uh, that evening was really bad. You know, I felt really embarrassed and sort of upset because no one wants to be... I know I'm open about the, the kind of person that I am and the sort of uh, the, my mentality and what's going on up in my brain, but there's only a level of openness that I really want to have. And I think having a panic attack in front of, what, 9,000 people is really, really quite bad for the health. Uh, and it, it, I didn't deal well with it on that one day, but I'm doing much better now. It was a real eye-opener. Because I think what I've realized is now that I've done the good bit of sharing my experience, which was, you know, sharing my diagnosis, encouraging people to seek help and all that kind of stuff, which is what I wanted to do. I don't want, because when I spoke to um, Niji Sanji during the audition process, what I wanted for my content was to provide escapism. What I really wanted was a space where people can forget about the worries of the real world and go home to someone who they feel like loves them truly. And they can spend time feeling as though they're being hugged and kissed and just welcomed home into something warm and they don't have to worry about the outside world. But if my problems are on display 100% of the time, it's gonna feel less and less comfortable for people and I need to recognize that. I'm starting medication on Monday. And so I think my plan for now I've realized that being as open as I am, it's not good for me or for you. And I will be open in many ways, but I think being open about deeply intimate, very personal stuff, um, you know, I need to sort of be careful about that kind of thing because I think being that vulnerable is sort of what led to that moment of panic. And I, I don't want to say in any way that I'm going to be any less close to you guys because we're still going to be, you know, I still love you very much and we're still going to be as close as we can. But I think I don't want to talk quite as much about like my mental state and everything because I don't want to be one of those guys who's always seeming to have a problem. Even if, you know, at the moment it's difficult to hide, that might get easier for me soon. And so I really want to go back to another, another time when it felt like I wasn't always turning to you guys for approval. And maybe sometimes I need to look, at, look inward, you know, look at myself for approval.